Hello everyone, my name is Aislinn Pomfret, and I wrote my paper on the exploration of equine heart disorders, um, murmurs and arrhythmias specifically. Uh, the article that I used to write my paper was recommendations for the equine athlete with cardiovascular abnormalities, so that's also why I'm going to be doing this PowerPoint over. So uh, I chose the topic um, that's related with the heart and cardiovascular system because it's always been something that's interested me throughout my life. Uh, this is specifically due to the fact that heart diseases run in my family, specifically arrhythmias. Uh, my father suffers with ARVD, which is arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia. And of course, there's many different forms of arrhythmias, so I thought it would be cool to kind of explore that um, in murmurs in different species. So we'll get started. So to start off, a few facts about the equine heart. Uh, the first is the average horse's heart weighs about 10 pounds, uh, which is 1% of their total body weight. The heart rate uh, for a horse ranges from 34 to 40 beats per minute at rest to over 240 beats per minute at full gallop. So that's a pretty huge range in there. And at rest, the horse's heart pumps 25 to 40 liters of blood per minute, which is the equivalent of 7 to 10 gallons per minute. Um, also, the horse has a general healthy heart due to their diet. Um, and contrary to popular belief, they don't suffer from heart attacks, um, but of course they can suffer from different heart diseases. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, so hopefully now you can see how the, hor the heart is such an important part of the horse as an athlete. Um, and uh, across the top you can kind of see the variety of exercises ranging from sprint racing to endurance to jumping. And at the bottom, you can kind of compare the sheer size of the equine heart to the man examining it. It's almost like the size of a watermelon. Uh, and at the bottom right, you can also appreciate the intricate network of the equine heart and how all of these different attributes of it just combine together to make it really just a tremendous athlete. Um, so we'll go into some of the diseases. So some of the common heart diseases and the ones that I covered in my paper, which I'll now recover in this PowerPoint, are murmurs and arrhythmias. Um, the general definition of a heart murmur, heart murmur are abnormal sounds produced by uh, defects in at least one of the valves of the heart. Uh, the sound or abnormal sound location and intensity helps determine the type of murmur. However, what is the real cause of the problem is more due to defects in the valve, which causes abnormal blood flow. So that's kind of the problem that it induces is the abnormal blood flow. Um, arrhythmias, on the other hand, are determined as abnormal heart rhythm, meaning it can be low or higher, irregular, or anything that's outside of the normal range of the rhythm of the heart. And so this can be due to structural or physical defects of the heart, as well as uh, metabolic, so that's like chemical processes within the heart and its cells are kind of uh, different, um, or systematic defects. Uh, probably the most common is electrical disorders, which is like a problem with the electrical impulse that starts the heartbeat. So we'll go ahead and explore those a little bit more. So it's impor important to also note that uh, murmurs and arrhythmias are kind of an umbrella term and there are many different subsets of each disease. So some examples of murmurs include mitral regurgitation, MR, aortic regurgitation, AR, tricupsid regurgitation, TR, ventricle, ventricular septal defects, VSD, and aortocardiac fistula. So um, as we all know, the horse industry likes to abbreviate and make acronyms for everything, and this is also true with heart diseases. Um, the differences in each of these types of murmurs is due to the location of the abnormal sound, uh, the difference in fluctuation of the sound, and the intensity of abnormal sounds of the heartbeat. So that's how each one of those differs from each other. Uh, this is also true of arrhythmias. Some examples that I focused on in my paper were Arterial fibrillation, which is AF, uh, atrioventricular blocks, which is AVB, premature atrial complexes, PCAs, premature ventricular complexes, PVCs, and ventricular um, trachea, trachycardia, so VT. 
um, the differences in each of the arrhythmias is due to the location and how it influences the irregular heartbeat, so how it kind of changes up that um, rhythm and everything. So. so in order to identify if a horse is suffering from murmurs or arrhythmias, it is important to take advantage of several tests. Uh, murmurs can be diagnosed by echocardiographs. The echocardiogram uh, shows a sonogram of the heart and a dimensional image to see the heart. So kind of shows um, a little bit closer how what's really going on inside the heart. So from this information, they can determine changes in sound and rhythm of the heart to identify and monitor the heart murmurs. Um, on the other hand, arrhythmias can be diagnosed via an electrocardiogram. This test is also known as a ECG or EKG, which you guys have probably heard of that before and it records the electrical activity of the heart. So as you can see by the image, electrodes or clips are attached to specific sites on the horse to measure the heartbeat. Um, I was fortunate enough to actually be able to work with electrocardiograms. Often in my internship last summer, I worked at an equine veterinary clinic and I used these often to monitor the horse's vitals throughout operations that I helped out with. So. That's definitely something that is used quite often in the horse industry. So an example of an echocardiogram image is uh, the black and white image on this page. Uh, it creates an image of the heart complete with the left ventricle, aorta, IVS, and fistula, as well as the heartbeat across the bottom. Uh, the second image shows the difference in rhythm and location of the sound can be used to identify different murmurs. So you can kind of see that the plateau shape, um, the diamond shape, the decrescendo, mid, diastolic, pre, systolic, all of those are associated with different types of murmurs, which is kind of cool how they can uh, narrow down all of those different murmurs to just different sounds and rhythms of the heart. Uh, this is an example of an electrocardiogram, or an EKG or ECG. It shows here an arrhythmia. As you can see, there's a big difference between the regular heartbeat and the recording um, of an arrhythmia, where there is a large section of irregular heartbeat. It's also important to remember that the abnormal heartbeats can come in many different forms apart from the one given here. It can be smaller peaks, larger peaks, really anything that is different from the regular rhythm as shown on the top. All right, so uh, what should we take away from all this information? First off, it's important to recognize when a, ho when a horse is suffering from a heart disease. Sometimes this can be easier to tell uh, with an ath athletic horse because you're able to notice a change in their performance uh, because you're going to be around them a lot more often if you're working them out. However, it is smart to have uh, checkups with your horse no matter the physical shape of the horse even if they're just a backyard pet or anything. Uh, second, uh, it's vital to monitor the progress of the disease. You need to periodically have uh, re-examinations of the equine athlete to see if there are any changes from before. And if so, it has to change. Your workouts have to change in some way. You have to see if it's better or worse. Or um, It's important to change the exercise plans if need be. So uh, if you see worsening in the disease, then you're not going to, of course, progress that severity any more than it already has. And finally, uh, in conclusion there, uh, the conclusion that we're drawn from the research is that more data needs to be collected on the equine heart diseases. There's not much known about them. Um, and we need to, of course, have this information in order to better understand the consequences it holds for the equine athlete. So here are my works cited. And hopefully you enjoyed the paper and presentation and learned something new about the equine heart diseases. So thank you very much.